Well, let me ask you guys about the writing process and coming up with this idea for reinventing the vampire genre, right. which we've seen right. done so many times before. What, did, what was your goal? What did you guys want to do with this film? Basically, when we came up with the idea, we wanted to have an idea that we could do for amount of money we could raise ourselves, because no one was going to give us tens of millions of dollars in our first movie. And uh, the idea of doing a vampire documentary to us was really, like, was really exciting, because normally vampire movies are incredibly stylized. Um, they're very sexy, they're very, uh, they can be very melodramatic, and our thought was, what if we shone the light of reality on this and really broke it down to, what would it actually be like if you were compelled to feed on human blood? What would that do to you psychologically, emotionally? And then in turn, what would that, uh, what would this creature look like if it actually did occur in nature? And try and ground it much more in biology and, mm. and, and things that felt much more real. And hopefully when you have the supernatural elements in this film, but shot in a documentary style where everything about that style is telling you this is real, that's gonna make it that much more exciting. We also wanted to bring it back to the curse. I mean, mm. so much of vampires in pop culture right now, it's, it's, a, it's a awesome thing. You get to be good looking and immortal and super strong and blah, blah, blah. The, the downsides are almost negligible. And we're like, that's been done and done well. We'd like to now tell a similar story, but now strip it down to just, like Cliff said, the moral question of murder. Um, and make it so you can't escape, you can't choose to go animal blood, you have to go with people and it has to be live people and constantly, forever. So make it scary, make it a curse, make it a cost. Directing it in a documentary style, and obviously we've seen a lot of found footage types of movies in the past, especially in this genre. What was it like as directors sort of adapting that style and doing it the way you guys did it? It's a it was great an adjustment. Question. Yeah, it totally was, because like our background for films, like we got into filmmaking, we loved like cinematic movies, like big soundtrack, lots of camera coverage, like uh, explosions or whatever, whatever fun we can come up with. Doing stripping all that away and going documentary style was a huge learning curve and it was both a, a boon in terms of cost because the costs do come down a little bit. Um, and in telling this fantastical story that is normally so over the top. But the flip side was that we was very, it was a huge challenge and huge learning curve how to make things feel natural, how to make things feel real because it's not the same. Normally when you say you're getting a frame, you want to put the most important thing dead center or like very prominently. That would often, and in, and in focus. So that would often feel fake in this movie. We'd have to anti-frame things and put things out of focus and like this, this can't be right. But then mm -hmm. that's the best shot you can get. Did, did you guys find that you wrote yourself into a corner in any ways with the screenplay, having to then use this documentary style? Any times when you're like, well, would this camera be still filming at this point? All like, the time. Yeah, no way! <laughs> you know, that was one of the biggest challenges yeah. because uh, like Derek said, the whole premise of the movie is to make it feel as real as possible. And if you start feeling manipulated by the filmmakers or that this that camera would never be on, why would he ever bring the camera and shot, you know, stick it in his friend's face at this time? Like, all those things, that would make you feel like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna dismiss, dismiss this as, you know, basically as bullshit. And uh, so we really did have to push ourselves and uh, hopefully we tried to be as true to that as possible and therefore uh, it, this movie retains a sort of a sense of authenticity or reality that maybe you don't get if you're not being quite as vigilant about that. I would say emotional follow. You right. almost always want to get a reaction to something. That's mm. very common in any sort of film. Um, but you can't really justify going, wait, hold on, you're feeling bad, let me grab the camera, take it off me, turn around, look at my face <laughs> yeah. and go, look, I feel bad. Like, that just, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So mm -hmm. you, we would have to tell a story without the reactions. Mm -hmm. And that is very limiting and very frustrating and we had to work around it all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you guys feel about acting in this and sort of playing yourselves? Was that always the goal? Did you think about casting these roles at some point? Well, originally, uh, Derek has been the lead actor in all of our short films, so okay. we knew heading into the project that Derek was going to be the lead actor. But it was only after we came up with the concept for the film that we're like, okay, Derek will be the lead actor, but because we want it to feel real, um, don't play a character, you should play yourself. And once we went there, we were like, okay, what if we just took a genre film and dropped it into our real lives? Derek will be the lead actor. Uh, he'll have a best friend who's a documentary filmmaker. That'll be me playing myself. Our friends will play themselves. Uh, our families will be our families. And, and hopefully that um, authenticity, all those real relationships will sort of permeate through the entire movie so it, doesn't, it feels way more authentic than anything you could sort of you know, create artificially. What's the process on the set with you guys, both directing, obviously writing it together? I mean, I would imagine you guys are super close dudes right. to be able to do this the way you do. I mean, yeah. any fights ever happen on the set? Not anymore. Endless arguments. Fights. That's the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take you out, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's really about like planning, getting to, getting the script where we need it to be, um, talking about the beats, and then once you go into the execution of it, we'd always fall back on the script, get what's on the page, and then if we had time to evolve, we could then 
explore other ideas. Um, the tricky part, though, is that one of us is the director at any given scene, if, and, or worse yet, we're both in the scene, and neither of us is the director. So no one's really evaluating the process because you can't be evaluating the other person's performance while you're in the scene. So the trick was then just to shoot the scene over and over and over again, go back, review, and, and try to pick out the parts that work and parts that don't work, and focus on those for the next set of takes. Are and you then, editing while you're shooting, or has that? We that wanted must be that hell to be the case. Then. Yeah, yeah, we wanted that to be the case, but it was actually impractical while traveling around Europe with a small crew. Um, so no, it was more um, just looking at the footage as dailies, and okay. then hoping that we had all the pieces we need, and then going back to Vancouver and cutting it all together. I think one of the things too is that. So Derek, we've known each other since we were 13. We've been making movies together since we were 16. And we learned the craft of filmmaking together. And when you're 16 years old, everybody's holding the camera. You're all acting in it. You're all writing in it. It's a very organic process. So we didn't come at it as uh, two filmmakers because we've been doing projects on our own and then who came together on this project. That's kind of the natural evolution of our process. So it f feels quite natural for us to work together. Well, fun movie, guys. Great talking to you guys. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot.